So today in the Christian calendar is Trinity Sunday. What that means is that we get to look, remember the triune God, the God who is three in one. Remember back in Advent at Christmas time, we celebrate the fact that God came down. The creator of the universe came down to come and live as a human. So God the Father came down to live as God the Son. And in and, and Lent, we look at God the Son's life, Jesus Christ, his death, and his resurrection. Last week at Pentecost, we celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit, so God the Spirit. Today, like every Sunday, we get to remember and worship the triune God, the three-in-one God. If anyone feels like they can explain the Trinity without going into heresy, let me know. I say God is always so much bigger than we can imagine, than we really give him credit for at times. And he has a purpose and a design for our life. This week, <coughs> Amanda and Sage are, are traveling. Sage, like I said, gets to go to uh, summer camp. Amanda is in Orlando studying all week. I think Sage gets to have more of the fun than Amanda. because She'll get to go ride horses, go swimming, do all this other stuff. And Amanda gets to go to Orlando. And as we were packing them, I realized there is a lot of stuff that summer camp kids need to take. It takes more and more to pack. And I guarantee the people with UM Army can relate to. It takes a lot of stuff to pack just for a week. That is not their suitcases. But that's what I feel like they look like and felt like. I am just so excited that they left us the kitchen sink and the toaster. <clears throat> but every item they packed had a specific purpose for the week. One of the things we have to be careful of is to not fill our lives with so much extra baggage, so much extra stuff where we do not leave room for God. But we do that with our to-do lists. We fill our days just to be busy or to give us something to do or to make us feel important because we have something to do. But that's all filler. It does not have a purpose other than trying to glorify ourselves instead of glorifying God. Life is so much bigger than we can imagine at times. Beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Some translations say void. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The first thing we understand is that everything begins with God. Everything begins with God. Say that with me. Everything begins with God. Now Genesis chapter 1 and 2 is so much more than a scientific lesson on how the world was created. In fact, it's really there to show us not how that what was created, how everything was created, but Genesis chapter 1 and 2 is in our Bibles to show us that God created the world. Everything begins with God. That is the point of the passage. To teach us and remind us that God is the source of our life. And God is the source of power for our life. And God's spirit is ordering the chaos. Notice that it says here, <clears throat> the earth was formless and void, vo formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Right here in Genesis chapter 1, we see evidence of our triune God, our three-in-one God. God the Father, God the Creator, creating the world. And we see God's Spirit 
hovering over the darkness, working to bring life out of it. Showing us that out of chaos, order can happen. And remember what Jesus Christ says about himself, that he is the living water. So right here in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, we see evidence of the Trinity. Not only does it all begin with God, but God gives great purpose to his creation. We go through and we see on the first day there was light and he made morning and night. And then there was a second day and the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. We see everything that was made, everything was getting prepared. Everything has a purpose. And then on the sixth day, on the sixth day, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over everything. And in verse 27, it, he sa- the writer says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and he said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. <coughs> Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. And over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Humans were made in the image of God. It all begins with God, but God gives us a purpose. Through our lives, we get to reflect who God is. Now, humans, we know that there's male and female, but God is spirit, so God has no biology to him what it means to be made in the image of god is right here in 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 chapter one of genesis notice the creative force that comes to create something out of nothing our creativity i believe is a divine attribute from god So when you're here this week talking with UM Army people and you see all the decorations and everything they have here and you come to worship, yes, they worship differently than we do on Sunday morning, but I promise the building will still stand. Notice the creative power that is involved. Not only do we get to be creative, but we get to be loving because God is love. And we get to show the world his love through our lives. Not only do we get to be creative and loving, but we get to be merciful. Because every one of us has received mercy from God. So we get to show his mercy and grace to those around us. And we do all of this not because we do it on our own strength, but we do it because we have the Holy Spirit that is dwelling within us and guiding us and giving us everything that we need. So we are, we are made in the image of God and we are being made into the image of God. This also means that we've been given an incredible opportunity to steward and to care for the creation that is all around us. That's the resources that we get to utilize for our consumption, for our health, for our living. But it's also the materials, the land, the water, even our financial resources. Everything we get to take care of because God has entrusted it to us. Because it all belongs to him. Now we like to own stuff. 
But the truth is, we are really renting it for the amount of time that we are on this earth. Or the amount of time that we choose to take care of it. Somebody else will take care of it and rent it for their span of time. Because everything belongs to God and he has given us dominion, the opportunity to rule and take care of it. We have been given a purpose and the purpose is to love God and love people. This week, We have about 58 people coming from the UM Army. It's a high school mission team with with, uh, high school teenagers, people. Teenagers are people, no matter what people, uh, other ones may want to say. And adults. And they are descending upon Alto. They are going to show the love and grace of God through Jesus Christ by utilizing the gifts they have been given and they, the gifts that they know they've been given. And they are going to learn new gifts that they didn't know they had because they get to go work on people's houses. They get to talk with people who are hurting. Maybe some of them, maybe some of them will realize They have a gift to bring God's peace into chaos. Maybe some of them can have an impact on your life if you give it a chance and talk with them. Because you never know what's going to happen. Maybe some of them will discover a high calling in their life Because you spend time with them. Maybe we can all see God do even more powerful things if we step out in faith and allow him to work and just see what he's going to do. We never know what will happen. And they're going to work on up to about 15 or so work sites, give or take, um, this week. And that's just not 15 people whose homes are getting fixed. That is 15 plus people, plus the teams that are there to work, plus the people that they go and tell what's happening. It's an exponential Uh, effect of how God's grace is going to be shown this week because they're using what God has given them to be purposeful to worship him in every aspect of their life what a great gift it is that this church gets to be part of that it all begins with God And we learn that God gives us a purpose. Our purpose is not to be successful. Our purpose is not to be famous. Our purpose is to worship and glorify God in all aspects of our life. We remember Colossians 3.17. It says, whatever you do, do it. For the glory of God. Whatever you do, whether you collect trash, whether you're a scrap collector, whether you're pouring concrete, whether you're like Steve and just Steve Cox and just block the middle of the road during the day, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. I'm still trying to figure out how that glorifies God, but he's got a purpose. And whatever you do, pause and thank God. And I invite you to pray this prayer this week, Psalm 8. It's a great psalm of worship. <clears throat> so say this, go, let's, let's pray this together. Starting where it says, O Lord, our Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. 
because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now, before you start thinking that he's talking about you, he's not. He's lifting up the name of Jesus Christ right here in this psalm. The Son of Man, who he has given everything to. And because he has given everything to Jesus Christ, we get to work with Christ. Because our purpose is to worship and glorify him. And we remember that we get to do it because it all begins with God and we have a great purpose in our life. We lift this up, this psalm up, because we love Jesus. We love Jesus because he loves you. Now, I know there, there are always people in worship every week that have so much going on in their life. That it doesn't seem like, how am I really going to get out of this? But hear this. Jesus loves you. You. Jesus loves you. When we proclaim the name of Jesus Christ into any chaos or order or, or disorder that we have in our life, we remember that it is God the Father who is also God the Son and dwells within us as the Holy Spirit that we get to get our power from in order to live life. We do all of this because of his love and his grace. It all begins with God who has given us a purpose to worship and glorify him in all aspects of our life. And there are some people that still don't believe it. There are some people that will leave this place and live as if God doesn't matter to them. And on Monday morning, you'll know it because you'll see how they try to cover themselves Instead of doing everything for the glory of God. Remember, everything we do is an act of worship. So this week, I invite you to take extra times of worship. Come worship with UM Army this week. Hear their hearts, hear their souls. Pray for them for the work that God is doing in them and through them. Come hang out and visit them. They're not people just coming to this church building. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ coming from all over the Texas Annual Conference who are here to, to work with us to show God's love and grace in this community. And each day, don't try to fill our day with extra stuff just so we're busy. Don't try to fill anything that God does not want us to have. Instead, trust that he is working in the world. Take only what we need. And remember that we get to work with God to be creative. To bring his peace and his love. And he fills us with so much more that will last for eternity than anything we might try to take for ourselves. Our life was made for a purpose. So we should try to live life on purpose by living life 
with God. We don't live life for God. We live life with God because every part of us, everything we do, has, an as- has a chance to show His love and grace. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the purpose you have given our lives, to share your love, to show your love. And I pray that you have spoken your message to the hearts of of all of us here today. And may we be the people who go out into the world and worship and glorify you with all parts of our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.